We're going to have uh, David Wilcock with us tonight, as most of you will know if you're actually tuning in. And uh, we, we are actually back on the air now, and it's, it's very exciting to be back on the air, I have to say. And we are going to take um, callers, but uh, I think that we'll wait until, I don't know, the end of the hour. We're, we're on, on the air for two hours, so the end of the hour we can take uh, callers. And uh, what I want to do now is find out whether David Wilcock is on the air with me yet. David, are I you there? I think I am. <laughs> okay, good to hear your voice. Yeah, this is uh, this is a pretty unique moment in time. The disclosure battle is starting to break out into very obvious uh, avenues, which are undeniable to even the most head buried in the sand ostrich people. So. Uh, it's a very auspicious time for us to be doing this maiden voyage on the Micro Effect Network, uh, given the fact that this magnificent spiral formation showed up in the sky in Norway the day before Obama receives his Nobel Prize uh, Award for Peace, which he noted the irony of that in his speech, given how warlike our society is right now. But uh, I was just having a two-hour discussion with Richard Hoagland right before we uh, started the show <laughs> about this spiral and what are the implications. And we went round and round, but the ultimate objective that Richard had was to try to tie in some real-world data. And I will plug his website right now and say that if you go to enterprisemission.com uh, and you click on the photograph of the spiral, he's written up a paper on it. And the most substantial thing that he found that I didn't know is that there is a harp facility directly where the beam appears to be originating from. Uh, it's called uh, the Icecat Ram Fjordmon facility. Uh, the island that everybody was seeing this thing over is the northernmost part of Norway called Tromso. It's a little island. And they were looking southeast, and that's where they were seeing it was coming from the southeast. And this harp facility is directly southeast of Tromso, so the location yeah, uh, matches perfectly. That's actually fascinating. Uh, so you're not buying the Russian rocket story, I, I take it? Uh, absolutely not. What we're seeing is definitely not a rocket because if you look at some of the pictures that are released on the Norwegian websites, you have 18 layers in the spiral. You also can see, if you look at the Daily Mail link, that there is a photograph of it taken in infrared, and the heat signature of the spiral is so substantial that in infrared it actually shows up very bright. Now, that's something they slipped in there. They didn't actually mention why that's important, but you have to remember the stuff that's coming off the edge of a rocket is going to lose heat very quickly once it hits the atmosphere, and the atmosphere is nowhere near... Uh, thick enough in terms of viscosity, like viscosity means how sticky something is in terms of its fluid property. The atmosphere is not very viscous at all. It's very loose. Viscosity, like you would need viscosity more like uh, motor oil or chocolate pudding to have something that could resonate enough to create waves that are 18 layers thick. It's not going to happen in the atmosphere from a regular rocket. This is not. The conventional explanation is actually laughable. And oh, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I don't want to launch off onto a huge monologue here, but let me just finish by telling you what Richard was saying about it. He thinks it's a weapons test. That's his most likely conclusion right now, that this is some sort of, uh, that the spiral itself is part of how the device actually functions to create a shield that could uh, deflect or eliminate missile threats. Um, but then again, he doesn't know precisely why this would have been done. Uh, I suggested, based on his hypothesis, which I don't necessarily agree with, I'm just representing what he thought, uh, I said, well, do you think that maybe somebody is telling Obama, hey, go ahead and make the announcement, and we're going to put a Tesla shield over the area that you do it so that nobody can attack you and try to blow you up before you do it, a la Kennedy? And he said, well, that's possible. But, of course, the other big part of the story is that at the end, you see this black hole that shows up. It, the spiral turns into a black hole, which widens very substantially. There's one video in particular 
where you see this black hole make a very sudden wide movement. And it's very, very obvious when you look at this that what you're seeing is some kind of projection from the ground. The problem is the infrared signature is so high in terms of the amount of heat coming off of this thing that you would literally need not kilowatts of power but gigawatts of power in order to run something that would generate that much light and that much temperature. And, of course, HARP facility would have just the right amount of power mapped into it already to be able to use for a purpose like this. I will say that I also got an email from an insider, and Carrie, I've talked to you about her before, so when I say her gender, you know who I'm talking about. But I'm not going to talk about her publicly uh, because she doesn't want to come forward and she's a new witness. All I can say is she's very knowledgeable, and she said in no uncertain terms, this is Bluebeam. This is exactly what it does. This is what it looks like. It's Bluebeam. Uh, so if that's true, then the spiral is only one of any of a variety of things that they could do with it, which I would agree with. I think that uh, these mystery halos that you've seen over uh, Russia, and I believe there's also one in um, somewhere around Bosnia, uh, they are obviously UFO-like in the way they look, and they are bright glowing rings in the air which have been filmed by people in their cars and put on the nightly news in Russia to the effect of making people ask the question, hey, do you think this is a UFO? And, of course, all the articles about the Norwegian spiral are people saying, hey, do you think this is a UFO? And it actually, I mean, I don't really watch American television, but according to Richard, who watches TV all the time to try to keep up with these things, he says that, you know, uh, Wolf Blitzer has joked about it, and um, Anderson Cooper apparently is watching all the Battlestar Galactica episodes from Sci-Fi Network now, and he was saying, Maybe it's the Cylons. And this is mainstream media. So, you know, Richard and I, we had an argument about this because he thinks people are too stupid to figure out that this is actually something paranormal. He thinks everybody's just going to buy the missile story. I don't think so. I mean, that's where he and I would have to disagree because I think the missile story might be like a comfortable place that you can reside in for a while to kind of like keep your worldview from falling apart. But I see this very much as people trying to knock down the wall and get to the truth of what's really going on with disclosure here. Because you got the same exact videos. Carrie, you probably have people sending you the same links that I'm getting. Same exact thing in China, same exact thing in Russia. In Russia. Um, so you got Norway, Russia, and China. And if we believe okay, in are you talking? are you talking about the pyramids? I don't know if you saw these pyramids that are in the sky over Russia – and one's over the USA. Uh, I'm not aware of a pyramid. I'm, 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 I mean, yeah, we'll get to that okay. in a minute, but just to finish my thought before we get to the idea of the pyramid, um, I'm seeing video that pe maybe you haven't had this sent to you. I'm going to have it in my website, hopefully by the end of the weekend. I'm, gonna, I'm writing up all this stuff into a big piece on divinecosmos.com. But before I get to the article being launched, I can tell you in advance that I have found video of this exact same spiral thing that showed up in Norway, but there's videos of it from 2006 in Russia, and there's a video of it in China published in April 2009 on the Internet. Now, that doesn't mean it was made in April 2009. That just means that we know that it can't be any newer than that. And the one from China actually spins first clockwise and then briefly counterclockwise, and then it dissipates the same as the other one. The one in Russia actually does almost exactly the same thing as we're seeing this one do over Norway. It is a spiral. You can see the same rotating thing, and it's like a beam that consolidates into the spiral. It doesn't start out that way. You can kind of almost see somebody tweaking the knob, and kind of like when you played that game as a kid with a magnifying glass and you're trying to concentrate the light to the point where you can burn a leaf with it from the sun. And first you're, like, trying to find what's the right distance in order to get the light to go to a pinpoint. This is exactly the same thing. It's like they're fine-tuning the knobs to get it to the point that they can make the spiral out of it. 